Hi and welcome to my playhouse and I've been a really bad boy today I've been out shopping again if you watch my videos and read the comments and the description of my videos you will see that in the description of my videos I post some links to if I'm talking about something it could be hard drive cages like this for mounting two and a half inch drives in three and a half inch base I'll post a link for that in the description and it will go to an Amazon page and that's because I have an Amazon affiliate links that means that if you're interested in those trays and go buy those at Amazon I get a commission Ka -ching! and from time to time I can use that money to buy something awesome that I can put in my data center here um, the really bad thing is that I always I have to buy that in the United States which means that well there's a lot of shipping and to bring something into the EU there is also import tax and um, that's not as bad as actually the, the fee that the post office takes to handle this because the post office takes about they just to, to do the dirty work they take at least twenty dollars and then there's the import tax on top of that and then there's the shipping and then there's the price of the product this time I was lucky I bought this one I think it was uh, $99 somewhere in the United States uh, NC I don't know what that that must be a state but let's um, let's go see what I got so here's the package it, it, it even has some think center tape on it but, well let's get this out here is another package it's well wrapped and it has the original box for this device so let's open that up inside that there is a something piece of paper blah 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 oh you might be able to see that this is from LSI so it has to do with rate controller I'm just gonna remove this plastic from it static electricity is not good I am wearing the wristband but this server, which is an Lenovo X3650 Model 4, comes with a rate controller, and that rate controller is the M5110 E. And the M5110 E can be extended with this little card here. Um, it's, it's a cash controller card of some kind. I don't think they brag about the name out here. Server rate M5100 series, one gigabyte flash slash rate upgrade. So this little card, I haven't even had it open because it's it's so nicely protected in the anti-static bag here. Should be able to go in here on top of the server. So um, let's have a closer look at that. Well, this is a bit hard to see, but over here is the two cables that goes from the rate controller on the system board and to the front to the drive base. But over here is a very big plug and that should fit very well with a plug in the, on the bottom of this card. So this card will go over here and be an extension. Let's go see the BIOS, how this looks right now. Okay, on the M4 I'm in the BIOS and system information does not say anything about the, about the storage. That's just RAM and so, so we have to go in and dig a bit deeper. In here in system settings and under storage, where did I put that down there, storage. There it sees the Amvango, I can't say that, Mega Rate, Server Rate, M5110E, configuration, blah blah blah. And um, we can go in there. And we can do a lot of good stuff in here we can go to the main menu and from in here we can actually configure the discs we can see the discs in there there are two discs those came with the server we're gonna be um, exchanging those fairly soon 
and we can create a new virtual drive create a profile based on virtual I have no idea what that is create virtual drive using wizard okay so that's how it looks right now hardware components um, advanced fan advanced enclosure doesn't say much here but this rate controller does not come with all the features turned on when you get it there is, you are able to put in extra features that you can buy to the server like this feature card this will open up for one gigabyte of cache and rate 6 and rate 60 should also be available when you plug this in so um, we're gonna try that see if that works I'm gonna turn off the server here so I've unplugged power to the server and I'm still using the anti-static rest band here to get to see this better I'm gonna unplug this riser card see that that gives you a lot better the view of that and it should just be plugging that thing in right here and everything should be awesome so um, let's let out the magic smoke let's let's let out the magic vacuum actually so it doesn't look like much but boy are there are many small devices on this thing it's so tiny lots of good stuff there is a plug here for a battery I'm pretty sure that's that's where the battery goes I thought that I had a battery for this it did not fit so um, I will not be able to uh, put in a battery right away I'll be on the lookout for a battery for this they are also quite expensive but well to, um, to put this in you you have to line it up with these blue things down here and then they go into these two holes there and there is a big press to install right there that's to plug it into this big connector down here without damaging it so we're gonna try that see if I can hit it there that's one that's one more there installed except this one there okay okay I'm pretty sure it's in and I sure hope it works so we're gonna put on the riser card again I'm gonna power the server again everything in this server that is marked blue is something you have to turn the server off to exchange everything that is marked with orange like up here we have the fans they are hot pluggable we can take those out like that even if the server is powered and plug those in again I'm gonna power up the server hmm. this goes comes up Hmm. Never seen that before actually. So it's booting over here. There. We will go into the bus and see if we can see anything new. Okay, the server is booted and I've been searching through the BIOS here and I haven't really found anything that tells us that a lot of things has changed. The name has not changed out here. There is a crazy amount of options under all of these menus. Update firmware. Okay, cannot do that from here. Silent alarm, background, operations, progress. There are so many options here. RAID 5 has been enabled. Safe store enabled. Cache offload is enabled. Advanced software options. I don't know if this has anything to do with a new thing. Um, manage server rate advanced software options. Urge. There is some options here. I was pretty sure that it was rate 6 
slash rate 60 that I was opening with this car. So I think we'll go and uh, visit the computer and see the IMM instead and see what that says. Okay, here we are at the computer and I've logged into the IMM adapter of the X3650 model 4. And let's just go directly to local storage to see what we can see. We have the server RAID M5110E PCI slot 0. Okay, we can press that and we get some additional information about that. Not really what I was hoping for. Let's see, firmware. We get some of that as well. A lot of different information. Okay, not really that interesting. Let's see, rate configuration. No storage pools. Okay, nothing we can do here. Maybe over here we have two drives. Nay, nee. doesn't say anything about it. Um, maybe anything here? No, still only that. Uh, this is the place if if you um, have some feature codes, you can put them in here. And the server came with this feature code for the integrated management module advance upgrade, which does so that I can remote control the server from here. That's a feature that um, is right over here. You can remote control that and you can access that. So it's a really good feature. Last OS feature, failed screen. Okay, never failed this yet. No, it doesn't really brag very much about having that new cache controller installed. I have found that I've been lying. The flashcard I have gotten is this one. This uh, opens up for server RAID M5100 series cards. A one gigabyte flash slash RAID 5 upgrade. So this is the one we just put in out there and I found that if I want RAID 6 I would have to go for that one and that's a feature on demand FOD upgrade for the M50 blah 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 and that's uh, that's one of the things that you have to put in over here at the activate key management. Um, that code can be put in here and I would be able to open up for that feature. Um, most of these are, well, there's a couple of, what is this? That's the, some rate controllers and upgrades for rate controllers and feature keys for rate controllers. And down here is 12 gigabit rate controller. That's the M5210. And there is a whole other set for RAID controllers for that one. But the RAID controller that comes with the server, this is all the features and things that you can install for that. It comes with this one up here. That's the integrated. That's the one that is on the system board. That one you can't take out. It will always be there. You can of course go in and disable it. Then you can get another one like an expansion card and it will actually support three of those probably also with this one so a total of four and there is a couple of more cards here that i don't really know how it works then there is that battery that i'm missing uh, i think that's that one there is a battery super cap and battery tray so that you can um, uh, I don't know, have more than one battery. I thought the tray was the plastic thing, the air muffler, that that was meant for putting the battery in there. That might also be the case. Then there is a 512 megabyte cache slash RAID 5 upgrade there. And there is a 512 flash RAID upgrade here. The only difference is that this is cache and this is flash. Mm. I would guess that cache is better than flash. Flash is, is kind of like slower than cache. But you probably don't need a battery for the flash. You need a battery for the cache. 
I'm not totally sure if I need a battery for the flash down here, but time will tell. There is a lot of good features here, and I'm of course on Lenovo Press and looking at the system that I just bought, the System X3650 Model 4 with the CPUs. Uh, it both takes the version 2 and the version 1 of these CPUs. Messing with the RAID controller is really... there is a lot of data on these. This is the server RAID controller, the one that is in the server. And I just, I'm not going to go through it, but I just want to scroll down and show you all the information that is on this RAID controller, on this server. Um, all the things that it can do and the expansion and uh, operating systems. Mm, there is probably even more. There is a lot of data on this. So, well, I guess I'll have to um, say that I've installed the thing. We will have to go and see next time if it uh, if it works. Well, I did install it and I think it works. I think we will only be totally sure when I go in and try and configure maybe make a RAID 5 array. Um, I have a couple of disks that we are going to be installing in there very shortly, but I'm planning on those two, that's two um, 480 gigabyte flash drives, and I'm not planning on putting those in Array 5, but I'm planning on putting them in, that's for sure. We might just be able to see the extension card or advanced feature card working in that one, so well. Um, if you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up, that would be awesome. I have to remind you from time to time because, well, thumbs up does count in Google's algorithm in some weird way that this video has gotten a lot of thumbs up and I become popular. I like that. Ish. So, thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so to see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye bye.